Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have our first guest in the studio. We're here to talk about nation building and national development. Now, this young man is running for House of Representatives. His name is Fedi Ladi Adimefe, and he's a candidate of the ENN. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> when, when, did this, when did this dream become born in your heart? Would you say the success of the Not Too Young to Run movement inspired this, or was it something that has always been there? No, actually, Not Too Young contributed heavily to it. I've always been passionate about Nigeria, but I didn't think much about election until I saw the bill, and I saw it as an opportunity to get involved. And for me, when I wanted to get involved, I was asking myself, which party do I run? I have to look for a party that at least can resonate with me at the level of ideology, and if you go to the old parties, you're likely to have um, issues with the people that are already there. And I really feel that we need something fresh in this country. The young people have to be given a chance. And a lot of the people who are leading us today led us when they were in their early, late 20s and early 30s. The present uh, president was a former head of state at the age of 29, or thereabout. And so you find that they were incredibly young, and they had an opportunity to lead. So um, the fresh ideas that young people can bring, the strength and the capacity is what we exactly need to shape Nigeria, and, and that's part of why we're here. I think for me, I, I like to focus on the issues. Nigeria is a place where you find a lot of young people who are struggling, and the unemployment rate is astronomical. You find um, education is really not working at every level. So for me, I'm asking myself, um, what is the future of the Nigerian child? Uh, five years, ten years down the line, where are they going? So I, I remember we saw a lady in Lekki Phase 1, my cousin did, and she couldn't remember her name. So apparently it was 10 p.m. So he took her to the nearest police station. And they wouldn't take her in because um, they said, um, well, she couldn't remember much. So why are we taking her in? Go to the hospital. The hospital said they needed uh, a police report to be able to take her in. He tried the, nurse, the church next door, but the church said she's not a member. She would need to call a pastor. And then he was stuck with her. He said he wanted to go home, but just asking himself, if I leave this young lady on the street, she was well-dressed. So she's not somebody that was just... Uh, in non entity, she had something going for her, but uh, she was sick, maybe. And he took her to a, another health center. When he got there, there was no light. He, we, when we got there in the morning, we had to buy um, fuel for the gen. We had to fuel the ambulance to go get the drugs. And I just saw firsthand in 24 hours the reality of life on the street. And if somebody that even looked professional and could speak English was caught in the middle, what about others who may not be able to express themselves? So we are really living in the crisis. I hope we understand the, the, the realities on ground, but it's not so tidy. By 2050, it will be about 400 million people. Now think about it. If education is not working and you have 400 million people, you're we currently have about is, a little over, I know it's definitely more than 10.5 million children out of school. Yes. We're running with that statistics yes, for a while. Yes, about that number. And if you're looking at it, and we're not doing anything to stem the bleeding or the tide. So everything is just going through the motions. Now, the, uh, the, the, the recommended average for uh, uh, budgets to education is about 24% of every national budget. We're still at 7.1% or 7.4%. Some states are actually doing better than the whole of the country. You know, but I, I'm really glad that you shared the story with us because that's first-hand explanation of the crisis that we're facing in almost every se sector, education sector, the mm. health sector is not really working. We're having mass migration of our medical personnel out of the country because they feel, they, not they feel, they are getting better pay outside the country. We're seeing the police, and speaking about the police, let's look at police brutality. We had a uh, video of Gideon Okeke, a Nollywood mm. actor, being brutalized by the police. And the funny thing is today we had a conversation about this and some other actors were saying to me, you know what, Ole, the funny thing is that nothing will be done about this. What's mm. your take on this? I think um, it, it depends on us. If we want this to go like the way of end stars, and after a while everything will go back to um, usual. But the reality is that we're dealing with the consequence. If you go beneath that, there are issues under that we have to deal with. Um, the police unit is an area where I feel we could use a lot of reforms. Um, the police, honestly, about 371,000 policemen to police about 200 million people. So as a country, we are under police. Now, when you look into the police situation, you find out that a lot of them are, there is corruption there. And let's even look at the process of recruitment. How do you get to recruit somebody? Do they go through the mental test? Do they go through all the processes? Or you just get people off the street and put uniform and give them a gun? Because if you arm a man who is not, who is not mentally stable, 
you, 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 it's a danger to society. Or who isn't properly fed? Because we know that a lot of them fed. are not they're, not, they're underpaid. Yes, so you find that the, the, the Police Reform Act is something that they've been pushing for quite a while. And the conversation has always been, do we go community police? But I think it's not just about that. Um, how their welfare. So if they are frustrated, they'll take out the frustration on the people. And I think if the policeman that is meant to protect us is now our greatest threat. But like I said, this is a consequence. It's just a symptom of deeper issues. What we see in the police force, we see it pretty much across every sector. We talk about the doctors that are leaving the country. The present stat stands at three, uh, on a daily basis, about three doctors that are leaving the country as we speak. So it's a massive brain drain, and, but we haven't recognized it for what it is. And today, Nigerians are funding um, Ghana, India with medical tourism. We're going there, raising money to take care of our people so they could get better health care. What about the people that cannot afford to do that? What's their future as a country? And we must live beyond ourselves. I mean, here in Nigeria, the middle class is very big on self-preservation. So once you have a good job, you have a good house, you can as well just live happily ever after. But no society can thrive when the good people stand on the sidelines. I mean, when we don't get involved, when we don't get into the race, make it, make it work. So we have all the great people standing and watching the country fall apart. So I think that the reform is something we're pushing um, and strongly. And I think, for me, from the, the, the police academy is an area where there's, there's really nothing going on there. So you, you find the corruption has eaten deep. People go through the academy, even how they get recruited, the, the process of taking them in, everything is for So we need to pay attention. Um, if you don't fight corruption, you will undermine the performance of any system. Give it time, it will crumble. So if, if corruption gets into the police force, this is what we see. Our citizens will get wounded on the street, blown and beaten, and nothing will come out of it if we don't wake up. So my point is not even g just Gideon, the celebrity. I mean, we're all feeling the pain because we, we, we love his movies and we know him. But every day on the streets of Lagos and across Nigeria, there are old people, young people that are taking this beating. They don't Fantastic. get on Instagram. Exactly. They don't get on Instagram. We don't, know as, we don't even have the statistics every day. We don't have day. it. Right. Okay, so I'm going to ask, um, what exactly would be your solution to the issue of police brutality, especially from the part where we know, okay, police is like a dump ground where anybody who studied for those who had tertiary education and they couldn't get a job or their dream job, a lot of them, most of the time, the police is the last bus stop. Is there anything that I you think should be done? I wouldn't even say it's It's more of teaching. That's, that's where we find lots of people who don't have... Yeah. You know, unfortunately, we see that lots of our teachers are people that had dreams, but then... No, no, for so me, what are the recommended reforms you think no, one of the big ones for me is... Aside to what you've said. I, I think we can't run away from the fact that um, the quality of our policemen would require that we are deliberate about who we recruit. So you're going to be dealing with intelligence. You're going to be dealing with data. So if you're going to fight crime, you don't just need people that cannot make sense of the data. If you give good data to a, 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 a person that cannot make use of that data, it's no use to society. So what I think we need to do, first of all, is to attack the process of recruitment. So the bill will focus on how do we recruit people, make it attractive for the best brains to come into police force. So I would say we need to increase funding. Really, the funding that we currently have cannot take us. I'm also a big proponent of community police. I know people make the point that um, the governors will hijack it and use them as talks. That's a real but fear. But is that not already happening? Anyway? It's already happening. So my point is, but let's look at the benefits of community policing because you find people who are in your community who are part of the community policing process. And so you're fighting crime firsthand and they have raw data of the people they've grown with. And so you're going to be get better results than posting somebody from miles, miles away who have no connection. Think about it. If the guy that confronted Gideon, knew Gideon in Lagos probably, I'm not sure that guy had watched any TV where he probably didn't recognize him. We just think he's another young boy. I'm going to teach him a lesson or two. So you find out that we need to work hard at properly funding that sector, but we make the case that funding is needed. Already there's a level of funding, but the corruption there still, you can't see the impact of it. So I think if our institutions are not strong, we're back at one. I don't see the political will to take on corruption at the level of institution. Corruption, fighting corruption should not be personality driven. It should not be because you're my party, so you're free. If you're against me, you're, you're an enemy. It should be that the institution by in and of itself is strong enough to take on anybody and then let the people go through the laws, let them go through the process. Our institutions have to be strong for themselves. So I think firsthand, we need to strengthen our institutions because if we don't do that, we can't fight. Don't forget that the police and the judiciary, they have to work together. If I, as a common man, I don't feel like I can go to court and get justice, I would live with any injustice you give to me. And there is a fundamental abuse that is going on. I don't think the policemen are trained to respect fundamental human rights. 
they have to be educated and enlightened. Having a degree is not enough, or wearing a uniform is not enough. What do you know about your job? Sometimes they conflict trying to play FRS on the road, they try to play VOI on the exactly. road. It's not your job. And at the end of the day, if people are stranded or in crisis, your first job is not to get them arrested. Our, pl our prisons are filled up with people who are detained for more than 48 hours. They have no intention of taking them to court. They are made criminals before they are convicted. I mean, in, in other parts of the world, you're not guilty. You're, you're, not, you're innocent until you're proven guilty. That is supposed sure. to be the, the provision the of uh, our constitution, at least. We have it written down. And it's Section flaunted every day. Every time. It's flaunted every day. I mean, even when you go to police station to report something, they'll make you pay for everything, and you see the, the, the corruption running deep. But again, like I say, this is just one of the symptoms we're dealing with. There are deeper issues. Okay. We know that you're running for... Um, Federal House of Rep, yes. Federal House of Representatives. <laughs> what, hope, what do you hope to achieve whilst if... You get them. Okay, I have five bills that I'm pushing. And I think people have been running, but one thing that we're deliberate about is this is a, a case where we're proposing the bills before we get into office. And my intention of putting those bills out there is that I want people to interact with us and shape it. For instance, I spoke about education. So one of the bills we're going to push is how do we basically make an intervention work for education? Now, let me give you an example. In 2015, they set up a community, a committee to review um, educational curriculum, and they took out history because they said they didn't have enough people writing it in WIAC. Now, a lot of people have believed that somehow there is no job for historians, so let's not write it. But guess what? We're coming to a time where the world is looking at Africa for African stories. I mean, we just saw what Black Panther did. We saw Genevieve's movie on Netflix. So Africa is a destination for stories. And people who can do this better are historians. But when you undermine the, the value of history, you endanger our identity because our history and identity are woven together. So on that level, I think there is a need for us to get people to rethink our educational process. And I'm talking about even some of the curriculums that we have. A lot of people are graduating, but are outdated. A lot of the courses we currently have in schools can, are not for the 21st century world. But we don't know. You're just going in and studying this, studying that. How relevant is that? In the real world. In the next few years, many people are going to be jobless yes. because robots are going to be doing yes. jobs as well. Yes, and the, don't forget, again, we said teaching is not a dumping ground. We must attract the best brains into school because a teacher is like someone that is replicating himself in other children. Mm -hmm. So they must love what they do. Take this conversation to Kaduna where they were having the issue of, you know, <laughs> fighting with them five for having fired a number of teachers didn't who did not pass. Basic test. Exactly. So you've talked about the education bill. We run the, out there, of time. There is also, the, I'm also basically looking at the health bill. And I think, again, I, um, we talked about the, the doctors, the exodus of doctors. Currently, they reduced the funding for National Assembly from 500 million in 2015 to 75 million. So right now, the National Assembly is grossly underfunded. Many people are dying for avoidable deaths. What I think is important for us to do is to also try as much as possible to incentivize our medical workers to make it more competitive. I mean, if I can have a fairly decent job, I don't need to go to Canada to be a third or second class citizen so I could earn more. We're also looking at the creative industries and SMEs. I think that SMEs, if we have to fight unemployment, Look at creating more jobs and support, supporting businesses. So in my bill, I want us to basically incentivize um, banks to be able to give tax incentives or rebates to them so they can fund SMEs. Now, for you to qualify for a loan, you need collateral. A lot of these SMEs may not have this collateral. So what we need to do is if you give the banks rebate, they can come up with programs that can cater to these people directly. So what you do is you take people off the streets, people off... Um, and then get them something to do. But it has to be very developmental driven because a lot of them will have to learn through the process. We're also big on labor laws. Our labor laws are very outdated. I mean, you have all the foreigners coming to the country, set up businesses and treat Nigerians like third, fourth class citizens and our government will stand and watch. Not anymore. I think we need to attack that. So every Nigerian must be respected. If you're a married woman and you're entitled to your leave when you have your first child, they should think about you as not just as an item on the cost sheet that they can replace with somebody who needs a job. But you must be respected for what you contribute and bring to the table. We're also looking at creative industrialization. Think about the creative industry as the future. So for instance, we have about um, 60 million young people. They're all very creative. Think of music, fashion. And there is no existing bill that can pull them into a point where they can be funded. So if you're a fashion designer, you have to think of how you distribute your fashion, how you create, how you market. There is zero support, zero policy to help you grow. 
If you're a music artist, think about it. Five, ten years after your music career, if you have a kidney problem, you need the whole world to crowdfund. I mean, we're seeing that happen every other day on Instagram yes. with one celebrity or the other. Yes. And it's so heartbreaking and so shameful that we need to still ha keep having these conversations. But until we see the desired change that we want, we must keep talking, we must keep enforcing until our rights as Nigerians are being guaranteed. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I think for me. raising all these brilliant <laughs> points, wish you all the best yeah, in your thank you. journey thus far and, you know, ahead. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.